You know that old phrase, you haven't walked a mile in my shoes? Well, when we met with our trusted partner, Dr. Matthew John, we knew right off we hadn't. Watch this important medical update. Bunions are formed really through genetics. Um, it can be influenced by shoes. A lot of people think shoes are the cause of bunions, but normally if you're already predisposed in your genetics, in your foot structure to have a bunion, then a shoe that's tight fitting and you know closed in and uh, pointed will just accelerate that deformity. But uh, for some people, we even see bunions in kids. And uh, I mean, I've actually done surgery on children as young as 13, you know, who have had painful bunions. Usually we like to wait until they've uh, grown skeletally and matured skeletally um, before we do surgery. And of course, surgery is really only indicate for anybody who has pain from a bunion, not necessarily just for cosmetic reasons. Well, for bunion deformities, it will never correct itself. It never gets better. So surgery really is the only way to correct it and to alleviate symptoms in the long term. Now you can always try non-surgical treatments initially with bunions, but uh, surgery is typically the best way to get, get it corrected for patients. Now for the vast majority and probably the majority of, of conditions that we see in the foot and ankle, surgery should be always the last option. Uh, we always try every non-surgical treatment first, and for most patients it works very well, such as heel pain. 90% of patients do not need surgery. We can alleviate those symptoms without surgery, but there's a small percentage that, you know, it does need surgery. Of course, trauma or any type of fracture, obviously sometimes we'll need immediate surgery. But other than that, most of the surgeries I do are always the last option. Well, this is a patient who had painful bunions, and bunions are protuberances or, or bony bumps on the side of the big toe joint. So this is kind of what we're talking about right here. Same thing on this right foot, this little bony prominence on the outside. It's not a growth of bone, but what it is, is that this bone right here, your first metatarsal bone, instead of sitting you know, nice and straight, it's tilted out a little bit. As it tilts out, it kind of peeks out on the side of the big toe joint, and that causes your other area of your, of your toe to push over toward your other smaller toes. And that's when people start getting cross toes and, uh, you know, to where they start having larger, you know, quote unquote growth. But it's not really a growth, it's basically a malalignment of the metatarsal. So this patient had a severe bunion deformity. It was gotten to a point where this has been several years and now she's got crossover second toe and it's underlapping the big toe um, and this has caused a hammer toe deformity. So we've got our large bunion here which is again that, that dislocation or deviation of the big toe joint. So in order to correct this we have to basically make specific cuts of the bone and shift everything over and we hold that real tight with screws and for the hammer toe, we actually have to go into the joint and correct that by fusing the toe joint. But this patient has now been able to fit in the shoes, get around without any problems. She does her hikes uh, normally. This is a, a school teacher that uh, waited for until she was retired to have her bunion surgery. Not what I usually would recommend for most patients, but you know, it sometimes is a matter of just a choice of when to have the surgery done. Bunions are the only deformity though that I always recommend patients get uh, surgery before it gets worse because the worse a bunion deformity gets, the harder it is to correct, the more involved surgery gets, and sometimes recovery can be a lot harder you know, if you wait uh, a long time. Now, for bunions, it's not an immediate surgical issue. Uh, for some people, you know, they wait a year or two years before they're really, really ready for surgery. Um, recovery from bunion surgery is about three months, you know, and it's not to where they're on crutches or in a cast for three months necessarily. Uh, we have a lot of our patients walking right after surgery. Uh, they're in bandages for about two weeks and back into a soft tennis shoe um, at that point. Uh, my, o my only uh, patient who takes a little time to get back to work is like flight attendants who are on their feet a lot and they do take about six weeks to get back. But my average patient, two weeks, they're back in a regular shoe, back to work. Uh, and then they're waiting for their foot to heal for that uh, remainder two, three months. I, I tell patients who come to me and they're 80 years old and they have a large bunion, 
and uh, unfortunately they've got cardiac issues, they've got circulation issues, they've got, um, they're just not a surgical candidate at that point. And my only, you know, comment to them is, you should have had that bunion done 20 years ago. Uh, it's it's going to be a little tough for us to really get that pain down um, without just wearing wider shoes or padding.